start then by saying that this is to coincide with Polly's first indictment. Mm -hmm. So, this demonstration is to coincide with Polly Higgins' first indictment for ecocide at the International Criminal Court in The Hague in Holland. He's been working towards this for a long time. I would say probably about 10 years she's yeah. been building on this mm. concept. There have been several mock tribunals at The Hague before um, and these aren't real cases but in one of the cases the defendant was found guilty okay. of ecocide. So it's just a mock but nevertheless that's important. So this is Polly Higgins going to the International Criminal Court and asking them to take the case. So she has to provide the evidence so that they can see that it's a real case and then they, if they agree, they will take the case and book it into the International Criminal Court. Sounds amazing. Polly wants to add ecocide to the five UN declarations, genocide or uh, ecocide would be the sixth. Okay. And she believes, along with a lot of other people, that this should now be an indictable offence mm -hmm. against the environment. Mm -hmm. Idea came up as um, a way of um, bringing uh, attention to what I consider to be one of the kind of fundamental uh, necessities for the globe is that we have a we we rebuild our um, our organs as it were in, how, in this case the tree providing us with oxygen and taking up carbon dioxide so. Um, and I felt as though it was necessary to kind of step up and uh, do something very public. This is, mm. this is the fourth side mm. of um, the piece. It all, all these clad a large container-shaped box mm -hmm. down in the front. On the same day, the Polly is standing up in front of the International Criminal Court saying, take this case, this is a crime against the environment. Yeah. Hopefully this, this flags up what she's doing mm. by kind of getting it covered by the, uh, the local and the national press in this country, they can go, then they, they've got a story. Mm. I think it's, I don't know how it'll be received, we'll see. Um, and how many people has it taken, do you think, to get this event off the ground? This oh, I would office? think probably from all the people that, uh, first of all, resourcing the, the sheets. Um, they're all sheets that uh, have been used and uh, from house clearances. So they, they, they have a whole narrative of their own which is to do with, you know, we spend a third of our life between the sheets and, uh, you know, birth and death and reproduction and uh, fevers and all those sort of things that take place in they were all embedded in the sheets. So then the sheets were um, sewn together. Um, the sheets were washed. <laughs> okay. <together. laughs> well, all right. She... <laughs> we didn't wash out too much. Um, uh, the sheets were all sewn together by uh, a group of women who operate in a, a sewing club in Stroud. And um, then... Um, one of the people who was there, it transpired, was a, an ex marquee maker. So she's been doing all the, the lacing down the side and a lot of the sewing. And um, so there's all that side of it. Um, the wood blocks are sawn at a local sawmill. And then uh, what I do with them is I, I set fire to them and brush them out so we get the grain. So there's that side to it. Those, those are all supplied locally um, from trees actually that have been lying around in the woodyard and weren't going to be used for um, any other commercial purpose because they're, as you can see from some of the printing it's very spalted and rotten. Mm -hmm. um, then there's the uh, a whole period of time where we 
we dyed them in a bath and hung them up and uh, then we had to, uh, then I went, after they'd been dyed, I had to take them to dry them in the laundrette, which is kind of in the centre of town. Um, and then after that, uh, they were um, stretched out in, not just here, but in two other places and printed. And um, I think we've got our printing technique down now. Yeah, so putting it up in the middle of the night will be a guerrilla activity <laughs> where easy. many potential criminals may be involved. <laughs> they will see it mm. on the next morning. Mm, exactly. Um, so that'll and be it will be very large and yes. very obvious yes. <laughs> in a very prominent place. The next thing is to replant. And uh, there are various people who have been planting trees for some time and some of them have planted millions of trees mm. and a lot of them have been in countries which have been uh, denuded of their trees but you know where the kind of objection levels are you know people on the ground they don't have necessarily any legal representation and it's changing people's um, attitude towards um, the plant world and without the plant world, we wouldn't be here. Uh, the trees are always coming to our aid. Mm. And now that um, the zeitgeist amongst scientists and naturalists is that, you know, there's a whole communication system going on between, uh, between plants and the whole mycorrhizal network beneath the ground, is that we need to see, we, we may not be able to understand it, but we need to be able to kind of begin to appreciate that there's a, a whole eco-structure that um, without our interference is there to uh, enable nature to carry on and provide for us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's interesting, we were talking the other day, there is, as far as we can see, no database just in this country on how many trees are planted. And that would be a really interesting thing, you know, a little bit like the fundraising for the church spire that goes up. Actually, if people could see how many trees were planted, my belief is that bad news disempowers people. They don't know what to do. No. But good news makes people want to join. And it's something that everybody can do, from a small child to somebody on crutches, you know. Mm. Um, all people can be involved in it. It's and it's just <laughs> planting a tree has you know, I mean it's always used as a sort of significant gesture when, you know, a new development takes place. Yeah, you get yeah. Prince yeah. Charles comes and plants a tree. Yeah, yeah. so you know, and I'm sure Prince Charles is into planting trees. Say that actually there's a fifth crime against peace here, and that is ecocide.